there is a huge and there has been a huge increase in remote encryption over the last couple of years. And remote encryption is basically where something unprotected on your networks is encrypting data on something that is protected. Now, something that's not protected could be, it could be a VPN connection. I mean, we all know how many vulnerabilities there are in firewall products these days. It could be somebody, a threat actor gets into your network and they spin up a virtual machine on a Hyper-V server. They have all their tools on it, none of your tools on it, but they use that box. That well, it could be your 17-year-old son on your home network. Well, it could be your 17-year-old <laughs> son in your home network, but controlling access, controlling what can connect to your important network resources is so, so important. Now, the big challenge with that, of course, is firewalls work on IP addresses. So when we release network control, we said, oh, we're going to release an endpoint firewall and it will stop connections. And then the customer says, well, I need my server to serve my users. So I need to open up my connections on my internal network. But then if somebody comes in with an uncompromised device, the server is now exposed. So the first thing is, well, only allow the IP addresses of your users. But of course, where do they get their IP, IP addresses, addresses from? Change. DHCP. So we created this concept of dynamic ACLs, which we've expanded on even more, where you can update and close ports and open ports based on who is coming from an IP address. So if I come in today as the IT guy into the office and I plug in my laptop, it will automatically say, Danny's laptop's on this IP address. You can open 3389 locally for him. But Rob's laptop, don't open it for that. Definitely don't open it for mine. 